Operating with zeros and negative numbers can sometimes be a little bit tricky. So this video is all about how we deal with them and make sure that we don't get things wrong. So when we're working with zeros, we need to take a little bit of care. There are some simple things you can keep in mind. When you're adding something to zero, it doesn't change the thing. A plus zero is still A. Seven plus zero is seven, for example. Subtraction. Well, A minus zero doesn't change anything because you're taking nothing away. But if you reverse the order, zero minus A, you end up with the negative version of the number you're taking away. Not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. Multiplication, another easy one, just like addition was, because when you multiply anything by zero, you always get zero, no matter what that number was. Division, the most tricky one of all. Uh, let's see, zero divided by A, that's pretty easy. Zero on A is zero, always, except when the thing on the bottom is zero. That's where it gets tricky. So A divided by zero, that one's not defined. We can't divide that way. Zero divided by zero, we call that one indeterminate. It's a slightly different thing, and it's a little bit beyond what we're talking about here, but it is kind of important to know that they're slightly different. So let's take a look at an example. We've got to evaluate the following expressions involving zero. Well, let's just see. A, we've got five plus zero. We know from back here in our set of rules, anything plus zero, is that anything? And I'm sure you can probably do that one yourself as well. Similarly, zero minus three is gonna give us the negative version of three, or minus three. This one looks a bit weird, but don't stress, we're just taking nothing away from minus four, so that's minus four, easy. Zero divided by minus 12, well, let's remember, zero divided by number that's not zero, that's easy, that's zero. So we can pop that one straight in. Seven times zero and one, oh, we've got to do something with that first. Seven times zero, my rules up here say that's going to be zero, so that's zero over one. Zero divided by a number that's not zero, that's zero as well. Finally, 70 divided by zero, I can't remember if it's undefined or indeterminate. Something that's not zero divided by zero, that's not defined. So we can say that that's not defined. And there we are, all done. Doing a little bit of operating with zeros. And I didn't even need my little spare page there. All right, what about negative numbers? Operating with negatives, it says here, can lead to unexpected results. Well, not unexpected if you remember all the rules, but who remembers all the rules? Here we've got minus minus a, that's equal to a, that's a rule. Well, what does that actually mean? When you've got a minus in front of a bracket, it's actually saying minus one times that bracket. Okay, so effectively we're multiplying the negative a by minus one, and the negatives knock each other out and leave you with an a. In the next line here, we've got a minus a times a b. Well, this rule's saying that's the same as if you pull the minus out of the brackets, minus a times b, or a times minus b. You can move that minus around as long as you keep multiplying, and you'll get the same thing. If you're wondering about any of these, maybe just make up some numbers for yourself, you know, something like a equals three and b equals four, and run through them and make sure that you believe that these things are true. I might do that with the next one. Minus a times minus b is a b. If I just try that with these ones, a equals three, b equals four, I'm gonna have minus three, minus four. Well, I know that that's gonna be equal to minus three times minus four. Minus three times minus four is 12. And that's the same as just the a times the b, three times four. That was 12 as well. All right, minus one a, well, that's just minus a. Now a little bit about adding and subtracting. We've got a minus a plus a minus b. That's the same as if we say minus a take away b. It's actually also the same as if we pull the minus out altogether, minus the a plus b. Similarly with, well actually it's a bit different really. With subtraction you have to change orders. a minus b is equal to a negative of b minus a. So it flips around. Anyway, they're just some rules that you can keep in mind. Let's have a look at these couple of examples here. In A, we've got minus 12 on minus 6. Okay, let's think about that. There's actually a bunch of ways you could go about this. The one I'm going to look at, though, is by writing the negatives as negative 1 times the positive version of the number. So we've got minus 1 times 12 on the top and minus 1 times 6 on the bottom. And then I know that 12 on 6, that's just 2. So I've then got minus 1 on minus 1 left over. 
I can actually cancel those out. As long as we've got multiplications up here and not adds or subtracts, we can cancel those. So we're going to be left with 12 on 6, that's just 2. Okay, same sort of reasoning here, 15 on minus 3. Okay, 15 on minus 3, I can think of that as 15 over minus 1 times 3. 15 and the 3, we'll get a bit of cancelling there, and we're left with 5 on minus 1, or just minus 5. Okay, and the final one, minus 1 times 4 times the minus minus 3. Okay, well these are all multiplications that we've got to do here, so let's just move from left to right, like our bomb das order tells us to. So I'm going to go minus 1 times 4, and that's going to give me minus 4. Then I've got times minus minus 3. Okay, well remember that we've got a couple of rules here. We could either just pull that inside and turn it into a 3, or we can think of it as minus 1 times minus 3. Again, just leaving us with 3. So we have minus 4 times positive 3, and finally that gives us minus 12. Okay, so that's a couple of examples with working with negatives. All right, and that's it for this one. Uh, we've seen in this video how to carry out operations with zero, uh, a little bit about how to deal with negative values, and just some of the rules that go along with those. Now, if you're working with uh, some of the worksheets that go along with this video, make sure you're practicing a few of these. If you're not, there's plenty of places on the web that you can look for these, and there's also a ton of textbooks out there that you can find lots of examples. The more of these you do, the more it sort of sinks in and you get the hang of it. But that's it for this video.